the times nines have a wonderful pattern structure that allows us to find all sorts of kind of quick tricks to find the products of the times nines. Unfortunately, teaching quick tricks doesn't really support students' long-term mathematical growth. So the Common Core Standards really don't encourage us to teach tricks. On the other hand, many students come into class having somebody have shared some kind of a trick, whether it's the hands trick or the fact that the digits add up to nine or that there's some kind of increasing and decreasing pattern in the tens and ones. So I thought we'd look at what are these patterns and why do these quick tricks work? That way, you'll be able to have that deeper structure Math Practice 7 discussion with your students if the quick tricks come up or if you want students to simply see these amazing patterns and see which of these can really pay off for the students in terms of building their strong fluency with understanding. I want to start by taking a look at why is it that all of these wonderful patterns seem to occur. And we're going to do that first by looking at the patterns through the Slavonic abacus. And you could certainly use other manipulatives as well. The unifix cubes would definitely be a great alternative to the Slavonic abacus if you and your students prefer them. Let's start with four times nine. Looking at the four groups of nine, I'm going to use the bottom row to make tens as many as I can. So I'm going to trade one on the bottom row and give it to the top row. I'm going to do that again. I don't have nine in the bottom row anymore. I ha actually have less than nine in the bottom row. I'm going to do that one more time. And now I've made as many tens as I can. So I've got six in the bottom row, and I used three others to make the three complete tens. So when you add up the three that I used to make the tens plus the six in the bottom row, you can see that it has to add up to nine. And that's the big idea behind a lot of the tricks and strategies that you'll see for students to learn or figure out their times nines is that there's some kind of a device that allows us to use this idea that the bottom row, the, the ones place, is going to be nine minus however many tens we made. This is why the hands trick works. If you've ever seen this trick, the idea is that you hold out both your hands and starting on the left, you number them one, two, three, four, five, and then the pinky of your other hand becomes six and then seven, eight, nine, and 10 on your right thumb. Now, if you were to multiply four times nine, you would hold down the number four finger, which is on your left hand, just like you see in the picture, and then you look at the digits or the fingers to the left of the one that you've pushed down and that tells you how many tens and then on the right you can see that there are six fingers that are up and that's your ones place so four times nine is the same as three tens and six ones or 36. so this is a great trick students who learn it often have no idea why it works and it does seem to drive for instance junior college professors to distraction that they've still got students that have to use this trick in order to figure out their times nines i definitely wouldn't want my students to become reliant on this finger trick approach but from a common core math practices perspective this would be a great opportunity to have students really dig into the structure behind the times nines in order to understand why this trick works. And again, I would want to emphasize with my students that 
I, I'm only showing them this trick or some other student has shared this trick and we're going to look at it not from the perspective that we want the students to use this as their strategy for finding their times nines, but we want to look at it from the perspective of what can we learn about how our numbers system works and how our times nines work through kind of examining this trick. Not only does Math Practice 7, looking for and making use of structure, help us make sense of the hands trick, it also allows us to dig into that very similar issue of why is it that half of our times nines facts are 18, 27, 36, and 45, and then the digits just reverse themselves. So now the products are 5, 4, 54, 63, 72, and 81. Why does that happen? Well, it's for the very same reason that we saw with the Slavonic abacus, which is that in the end, we're using that bottom row of nine beads to make as many tens as possible, and then whatever's left in that bottom row becomes the ones place. So ultimately, those digits always have to add up to nine, at least through nine times nine, and even 10 times nine. After that, are all related to the same idea that we're using one of the groups of nine in order to make as many tens as possible and then what's left gives us the ones place. So if you wanted to dive into this topic with your students, it would help explain many of the different tricks they may have been learning at home or from a tutor or a tutoring type of company. I hope you and your students enjoy diving into Common Core Math Practice 7 and really looking underneath these tricks to see what the heck is going on mathematically.